alaikum, everybody. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> okay, so today um, I'm going to be talking about this life and how it's very short. Um, and as people have been saying, uh, I just, oh, okay, I just turned 21. <laughs> So um, I felt like this was an appropriate speech topic because I kind of feel like this is the last um, youth like milestone, <laughs> I guess to say, because um, when I was nine, I remember wanting to become double digits, 10 years old, awesome, and then becoming 13, a teenager was a big one, and then wanting to drive, so 16 was the next 18, becoming an adult, uh, that didn't really do much, and now 21. Uh, and so now I can go into bars, shame everyone who's drinking, and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's, it feels kind of the same, but also a little bit freeing. So uh, let's continue. Okay, so I always hear from everyone, um, don't grow up too fast, right? Uh, try and appreciate the time that you have as a kid, as being young and everything. And they always like explain to me that before you know it, you're going to get married and you're going to have your first kid and then you're going to have your second kid and then maybe they'll remember the third kid. And Sorry, Shane. And then um, <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be 30 and then you'll be 40, age uh, of maturity. And then um, you're going to end up being as old as I am, and you're not going to know how you got there. And I hear this a lot, and it's interesting because I feel like I have kind of noticed that life is just moving faster and faster, and I'm not really realizing it. I still feel like I'm 18. Like, when I think of how old I am, I don't really think, like, I'm in my 20s or anything. It's just like I'm 18 years old. So it's weird to kind of believe that and realize that. So there's a few um, theories as to why uh, time moves so quickly, and I'll, I'll just briefly go over them. So there's ratios, memories, losing time, and being under pressure. So the first one is ratios, and this just means that when you're, when you're like five years old, a year of your life is a huge part of your life. It's like 20%. But when you get older and you're 50, a year is only 2% of your life. So you start feeling like the years are moving by faster. And um, so that's why when you're younger, it just seems like everything is moving so slowly, and you don't really understand like this concept of time like you you turn five and six and you want to get older but it's just it kind of moves pretty slowly uh, after that after around maybe like I want to say 15 I feel like it starts kind of picking up and you notice that um, the years are getting longer and you're realizing um, you know how much time is uh, passing by quickly so the next one is memories. So there's something called um, like vivid memory units. And when you're younger, you have um, more uh, vivid memory units because all of the experiences that you have are new. And they're attached to strong emotions because it's like a first time and you realize, oh, okay, like this is the first time I'm experiencing something. It's a new memory. I haven't ever done this before. And so it kind of hits you. Um, and... Oh yeah, so the other thing is that when you get older, you start thinking of things in chunks. So if you've ever spoken to someone under the age of 10, you will know every single thought they had that entire day. And they will talk to you and they will talk to you and they remember these things and they think about them and it doesn't really slip past them. But if you ask someone who's older, you say, you know, how's your day going? Oh, it's good. Yeah, oh, I went, I went to work and... Uh, got dinner after and it's not there's no details right but like when you're younger you remember all of these details so memories is another thing um and then just a quick note it says a person might take a thousand vivid vivid memory units to get to 10 years of age and another thousand to get to 47 years of age so traversing the last 37 years just as quickly so it's kind of crazy that when you're younger you have all these memories and then it just jumps and it it doesn't have the same effect 
losing time. Uh, <laughs> I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Everyone's getting older. And um, the next one is kind of interesting. There was um, a study done where they were talking to uh, a group of people that were between the ages of uh, 50, or actually all ages. And they realized that people under 50 um, feel that time is moving very quickly and they, they can uh, recognize that they're under pressure a lot of the time because they're going to school, they're going to work, they're doing all these things, they have deadlines that they have to meet, so they're always thinking about the future and when they have to submit their paper or their work or presentation, whatever it is, right? Um, but Seemingly enough, after like between 50 and 90, when most people are retired, uh, they don't really recognize the, um, they don't feel like they're under pressure. So time actually kind of starts to move a little bit slower. Uh, so that's a huge part of our time moving quickly is that we're always looking forward to the next thing um, and realizing that we have deadlines to meet and things to accomplish in our lives. So now I'd like to take a look at the chronic perspective and what God tells us about time of this world. Um, so I'm going to read uh, 1677. This life is very short. To God belongs the future of the heavens and the earth. As far as he is concerned, the end of the world, the hour, is a blink of an eye away or even closer. God is omnipotent. And just to give you, like, an idea of what a blink of an eye is, it's 300 to 400 milliseconds. So it's very, very fast. We blink, and we don't even realize it. Um, and then 3054, this life is very short. God is the one who created you weak, then granted you after the weakness strength, then substituted after the strength weakness and gray hair. He creates whatever he wills. He is omniscient, the omnipotent. 55, on the day when the hour comes to the... To pass, the guilty will swear that they lasted in this world only one hour. That is how wrong they were. So 3054 just basically gives us our life cycle in a sentence. Like that is, we come into this world weak, we gain strength, and then we go back to being weak, and we leave this world. And that's our life cycle. And it goes by so quickly. Thinking back to Hossein's speech about, you know, even human history is so minute in terms of like our entire Oh, the universe, universe's history. So time is something of this world. Um, it's a worldly concept. And 32.5 mentions, it says, All matters are controlled by him from the heaven and the earth. To him, the day is equivalent to 1,000 of your years. And so it's just kind of crazy to think that one day of God's is, a thousand of our years, we can't even think about that. But one thing I did think was interesting was that Noah lived 950 years, so it's like almost, <laughs> almost there. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to mention was uh, there's like this analogy that I have. Has anyone ever just like fell asleep and then they wake up and it seems like they didn't sleep at all and they just closed their eyes and opened it and it was like nothing happened, right? and you feel robbed of the time that you wanted to sleep. But you wake up and you realize, um, you know, wow, I was just sleeping for eight hours. And I feel like that's kind of how we're going to feel on the day of resurrection. When we're before God, we're going to realize that, you know, we just close our eyes and open them. That's what this life was, right? And so we get um, kind of hit with this realization of how short this time, our time is here. So this kind of makes us want to get in shape pretty quickly, right? Because we realize we don't have that much time. So um, Surah 6, verse 2, it says, He is the one who created you from mud, then predetermined your lifespan, a lifespan that is known only to him. Yet they can, you continue to doubt. And something um, interesting, I was talking to Elena a while ago, and she kind of had this epiphany, and it hit me too. This idea that our, our life is... Um, is fixed. The amount of time that we have is fixed. There is no, we're not going to live any longer than we're supposed to or any shorter. So the amount of time that we have is all that we have to get closer to God, to grow our soul. We, we need to take advantage of the gift that God has given us, this last chance, to make it back to him. Uh, 1799, could they not see that God that the God who created the heavens and the earth is able to create the same creations? He has predetermined for them an irrevocable vocable lifespan, yet the disbelievers insist upon disbelieving. 
So next is how we can grow our souls uh, as soon as possible because we need to take advantage and maximize our time here. So I'm going to go over a few of the religious duties that are in Appendix 15. So the religious duties instituted by God are in fact a great gift from him. They constitute the nourishment required for the growth and development of our souls. Without such nourishment, we cannot survive the immense energy associated with God's physical presence on the day of judgment. Additionally, Sir 15 verse 99 states that observing the religious duties instituted by God is our means to attaining certainty. Worship your Lord in order to attain certainty. So we want to achieve that and we want to grow our souls. And um, how we do that is by practicing uh, the religion, worshiping God alone and, and following the commands. So the first one I want to talk about is the contact prayers, which is the steak uh, dinner for our souls. Um, and in the appendix, it says, while a soul may attain some growth and development by leading a righteous life and without, observ uh, without observing the contact prayers, this would be like surviving on snacks without regular meals. So imagine just living your life without ever having a really good meal and just having snacks like pretzels and <laughs> whatever cheese and just constantly those little things that still sound good, but it's not fulfilling, right? We need something big to really uh, spurt the soul growth. Um, so Audio 48, uh, which is titled, it, it's in 11589, um, the Master of the Covenant talks about how not having the contact prayers and being righteous is like living off of snacks and trying to make it to heaven without a map. It's a slow process to growth, and that the contact prayers are the fastest way to make it to heaven. And we know that we can't make up these prayers, so we should be really on top of the idea of like whenever we know it's time to pray, having our ablution and going and doing our prayers so we don't miss that opportunity to get this huge meal for our souls. Uh, next is the obligatory charity. Uh, everyone knows we have to give 2.5% of any money that, money that enters our pocket. Um, and the appendix says, the vital importance of zakat is reflected in God's law. My mercy encompasses all things, but I will speci specify it for the righteous who gives zakat. So giving... Pro, giving from the provisions that God has given to us, and uh, it actually reduces greediness or any sort of um, want to hold on to the things that we attain, because we know that God owns everything, and he gives these to us as gifts, and it's not ours, so we have to give, away, uh, give that away to uh, the needy. Okay, thank you. Um, and then fasting. And uh, the verse 2183, O you who believe, fasting is decreed for you as it was decreed for those before you that you may attain salvation. And um, I don't know about you guys, but Ramadan is my favorite time of the year. It's such an amazing feeling to be with the submitters, growing our souls every moment of the day because you're constantly thinking about God and you're thinking, you know, okay, better not eat or drink anything. I have to be reminding myself. And, you know, you go out, work, school, whatever, and you live like a normal day, but you have to keep in mind that, you're not eating, and you're thinking about God a lot of it. And with being with the community, breaking your fast, mashallah, it's such a gift from God. Okay. And lastly, lastly is pilgrimage, hajj. So it says, once in a lifetime, hajj and umrah decreed for those who can afford it. Pilgrimage commemorates Abraham's exemplary submission to God and must be observed during the four sacred months. Um, and so I haven't experienced hajj, but from people who have gone, uh, they express what a uh, huge emotional trip it is and how incredible it is to see the Kaaba and uh, experience that. It's, it's awesome, and I think that that's just about uh, the soul growth that you get, right? God get, grants you happiness. And I'm almost done. Of course, there are many ways to grow our souls um, and throughout our life, but as long as we are worshiping God alone, then we will receive God's recompense. And I would just like to end on a verse Sir 2, verse 277, divine guarantee. Those who believe and lead a righteous life and observe the contact prayer salat and give the obligatory charities that caught, they receive their recompense from their Lord. They will have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve. Thank you. Okay, questions. Who has questions about this?
This life is very fast. Do you guys remember? Okay. What were the questions? No questions. Anybody? Going really once. Thorough job, right? Going Throw twice. All right. Shall no I? questions. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Hannah. This happens to me a lot, so thank God I get to do it this year. Ready, guys? One, two, three. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Hannah. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, mashallah. God bless you all. Let's do an al-fateh, inshallah. Al-fateh. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-rahmani rahim. Maliki yawm al-deen. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdana sirat al-mustaqeen. Sirat al-ladina an'amta alayhim. غير مغضوب عليهم ولا ضالين